Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, we're going to be talking about um, prohibitions. We're going to be talking about prohibitions. We're going to be talking about food. Uh, mm. And and like and booze. First of all, and beverage. Frank and I have made some discoveries today. Oh, that we did not expect to make about the Mormon word of wisdom. Oh yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, I did not know there were some things I didn't know, and I'm surprised not to have known, not to have known them. Excuse me, and I am excited to talk about them. Cause it <laughs> well, was good. Cause it's crazy. That is a tease, Dan. Right? You just teased. I did. I did. You teased us all. So those those who listened to this week's uh, Frank and Dan diary, mm. uh, the, our Patreon donors at the level that you get the diary, yeah. um, they'll they'll know that we talked about Mormon food. Yeah. That you can't eat. Right. So so, so now we're going to talk about shit that you can't. You can't eat. eat. Yeah. God damn it. Well, here's some other stuff that can't be eaten. Oh, oh, or drunk, I guess. Yeah, what do way. you got? Uh, uh, this is uh, according to the Summit Church in Springfield, Virginia. Oh, fuck that place! Which kicked a woman out for breastfeeding her child <laughs> while sitting in the pews. Oh. Well, I don't know if she was officially kicked out. She was asked to go to a private room, mm. and then she declined. Yeah, uh, because, then, because no thank you, I'd like to just be in church and listen to the thing and feed my child. Right, absolutely. Um, she was also told that uh, the church does not allow breastfeeding without a cover because it could make men, teenagers, or new church goers uncomfortable. And one woman told her that the sermon was being live streamed and she would not want uh, the, the, the mother to be seen breastfeeding. Uh, oh, in so, case the camera cut away to the titties. <laughs> you know, it's, it's exciting. Mm. Um, so she ended up leaving the church entirely. She didn't just mm-hmm. go to another room. Right. Um, and then she uh, got on the Facebook and her name is Annie Pagaro. Should anybody be interested? Uh, but she got on Facebook with her baby. Uh, it sounds like she was breastfeeding in the video on Facebook, um, telling viewers what happened and urging women to stand up for breastfeeding. Yeah. Well, the fact of the matter is, uh, what this church did was against the law. And it is against the in law. In what state? Virginia. Okay. Virginia has a law on the books that protects women uh, who are breastfeeding from uh, any sort of... Like they they are allowed to be there. Yeah. Any place that a, that that a specific person is allowed to be, they are allowed to breastfeed. Yeah. If, in that area, if the as woman's well. allowed to be in that space, right? I and think that that's also the law here in Utah. Uh-huh. I don't know everywhere, but that that's how Virginia's written. Some states are, um, they're all worded a little differently. They all kind of get to the same point. Yeah. Is what I I sort of noticed when when looking up these things. Um, but where did I, uh, some states are, uh, feel the need to sort of dance around and get very specific. Oh. Uh, South Dakota, um, f- this is, this is very interesting to me. Uh, th- it says that it, it, this is the, um, their definition of nudity. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, the showing of. No, the showing or the simulated showing of the human male or female genitals, uh, pubic area or buttocks with less than a fully opaque covering or the showing of the female breast with less than a fully opaque covering of any portion thereof below the top of the nipple <laughs> or the depiction of covered male genitals in a discernibly turgid state. Uh-huh. For the purpose of creating sexual excitement. This term Wait, is, if it's not for the purpose of creating sexual then excitement... Then you can have a chubby. Totally okay. <laughs> also, I want to point out, I'm offended that I, a woman can't show under boob? No. No under boob? So this is the problem with getting in and defining it to... The, the, what I love about <laughs> South Dakota, because I looked at a bunch of the different states, yeah. and they were all basically just like... 
you know, you can't dance around naked. Right. They didn't feel the need to like actually define what it is, right? Um, and uh, this term does not include a mother's breastfeeding of her baby, irrespective of whether or not the nipple is covered during or incidental to feeding. Right. Like this is all very legally overly defined. Most yeah. all the states are just really kind of, you know, it, hey, she can't be. You can't fine her for right. any side of, you know, public I, indecency. Or, you know, I, I know that Utah's law, one of the Utah laws says it doesn't even make it. It just says you can't even make a law that makes breastfeeding illegal. Oh, like, wow. Like there's no, there, you can't make that. So a municipality can't say, well, we don't like them. Right. In Utah, right, right. It, is, it will be you can whip out a tit to feed a kid. Yeah. The law is fairly new in Virginia. On mm-hmm. uh, 2015 is when it passed. Oh. Uh, before the law's passage, um, women had the right to uh, nurse um, their babies on state-owned property, uh-huh. but restaurants and other you know private businesses and whatnot could have laws or rules rather to prohibit it huh uh but uh thanks to, it seems to be um i know there must have been a movement or something because the, all the yeah. states seem to be pretty clear on it well the there federal is, government there's, there's is the free the nipple movement well. that's that's been active free it and we talked about this a yeah. couple shows ago and you know here's the thing all of this might become moot if that if if that uh thing that we that lawsuit that we talked about like becomes national Mm. because it might just be like some they might just catch on to the fact that there's no difference between a woman's breast and a man's breast except there are some differences i mean but they're yeah yeah fleshier i don't know i've seen some men with some pretty fleshy boobs i'm just gonna say but in general i would say by default (laughs) in general less fleshy yeah right Anyway, but uh, but you know one is not more shapely in their fleshiness. Oh, and believe me, more lovely. I think uh, the the la- the ladies' boobs, but certainly not anything that like the only way to justify prohibiting it is to sexualize it, and it's not, and that's just stupid. Well, we have sexualized it. Well, yes. Let's not go down this road again. Anyway, but, boobs. Um, uh, boobs are great. Get them out there, ladies. Yeah, exactly. If you got, Especially if, if there's a child attack. If you're feeding your child, don't ever feel ashamed to do it anywhere as openly as you like. And I would say especially in a church. I mean, fucking hold their feet to the fire here. Well, like, I mean, come on. They're also like the, these folks were. I don't know specifically about this church, but I'm going to make some assumptions. Uh, probably pro-life. They yeah. want babies in the world, and right. they don't want these babies to be able to eat. Come on! Well, as as is often pointed out, uh, pro life is not the same as most pro life people are actually just pro birth. Uh, as soon as it's out of that birth canal, fuck that piece of shit. <laughs> I don't want no, my I don't want my government they still love I don't, babies. I don't want my taxes paying for their welfare. I don't want blah blah blah. They love babies. Too. Everybody loves babies, except, I mean, I, I, especially the atheists, because they're delicious, <laughs> is the standard joke. Right. Actually, can we all just stop making that joke, the baby eating joke? It's it's not funny anymore. I don't feel like. It's wow. Been, it's been overplayed. You heard it here, Dan. Uh, first, I'm just, everybody. I'm just saying it's overplayed. Dan has, uh, <laughs> he's rejecting that joke, everyone. Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm going to take us to England. Oh. Huh. Land of the BBC, the British Broadcasting <laughs> Center. Uh, Amongst other things. Company? Corporation? Corporation. Anyway, um, the BBC has done a new poll. And uh, it's a weird one. It Basically, it was for Easter. And they were asking people about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh. And there are some interesting uh, results. I feel mm. you love a good poll. I know I do you love do. a good poll. Yeah. So let's um, when they asked about specifically about the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 17% of the, uh, of all people interv- uh, uh, in the, in the poll believe the Bible version word for word. How many? 17. 
Okay. Only 17%. Okay. Of Christians, how, what percent do you think believe word for word the Bible version of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Uh, probably in the... Probably, it's probably not half. I would say in the 40s. 31% of Whoa, Christians. Okay. Rising okay. now among active Christians, that oh. rises up to 57%. Oh, okay. Still, only 57% believe the thing. Exactly half The of, thing is crazy. Okay, but keep going. Exactly half of all people surveyed did not believe in the resurrection at all. Good. Including Christians of... Whoa, now see... Okay. 20%, over 20% of Christians did not believe in the resurrection at all. No, that doesn't make sense. It's kind of pivotal to the whole thing. Like, he, uh, or Christ, am I, Christ am I, am I uh, died. Oh, yeah, no. Or, that's uh, right. He was born, rather, and then he died and he, raised, he was raised from the dead. Like, that's it, folks. That's, that's Christianity. That's, that's, that's the crux of the whole thing. That's the Christ. Yeah. The Christ is that guy. Yeah. Over Without twenty that, over twenty no percent of Christianity. <laughs> who are these twenty percent? Here's what I want to know. Tw- who are the twenty percent of non religious people that th- say they believe in some form of life after death? Twenty uh, percent of non religious people say they believe in some form of life. Well, non religious. Yeah. Th- th- you know. Woo. They, uh, it's woo. Yeah, that's what they're attaching to. But, like, that doesn't say that they're, like, non believers. They're just not religious. Okay, you ready for this one? Uh-huh. 9% of non religious people uh-huh. believe in the resurrection, 1% of whom say they believe it literally. Ah, that person's confused. <laughs> I think they were confused. Uh, was this a phone poll? Like, how, how did this thing work? I don't know. They just said uh, they they surveyed two thousand British adults by telephone. Like yes. Poll. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Yeah. That person. Uh, that was a confused individual. I find that so bizarre. But one percent. That means Nine... that like twenty people all said that, but two thousand people being. Yeah. Nine percent of non-religious people believe in Jesus's res- resurrection. Why the fuck? How? What? What are you doing? What is going on with you that you don't believe in Christianity? But you're like, oh yeah, that probably happened though. That's probably legit. I know, it seems improbable that he like came back from the dead. But yeah, sure. But what am I going to do? Accuse but- billions of people of lying? It still doesn't make me believe in it. Right. I mean, sure. Come back from the dead. I don't have to think you're God or anything. Right. It's not like he walked on water. I mean, he did probably walk on water. He did. <laughs> he did. I'll admit that. I, I'm big enough. I'm man enough to admit when I'm wrong. He did walk on water and did come back from the dead. But I'm no Christian. Fuck those guys. <laughs> Bunch of jerks. Only with a British accent. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the British equivalent of that was. God. I just think it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Moving on. Okay. Something a little bit more serious. Yeah. I can't save this one to the end. It's No, no, no. It's not uh it's not one to save. Uh but also not one to start the show with either. Um News from Saudi Arabia, Dan. Ew, that never starts. Nothing good starts that way. Not usually. <laughs> uh a uh, an atheist has been sentenced to death. Uh in Saudi Arabia. His name is Ahmad Al Shamri. Did he um, commit murder? No, he's an atheist. He committed atheism. He committed atheism. Uh he lost two appeals before the ruling um Oh no, so he's lost two appeals and then there was the final Supreme Court decision earlier this week. Uh he was arrested in 2014 and charged with atheism right. and blasphemy, both punishable by execution. Um, he, uh, the way he got caught and discovered and all that, uh, he loaded up videos to social media denouncing the prophet Muhammad, Yeah, which is, uh, yeah, he made a very uh, foolish mistake. Well, yeah. I mean, as, <laughs> as if he understood the potential ramifications of, of what he was doing, right. Um, I think 
think he's a pretty brave man and somebody who was standing up for what he believed. Maybe. You know? It just sounds stupid to me. First, get out of the country, then upload the videos. That probably that would probably be a better sequence of of events if you know. Because now what? Now, now, now he dies. <sighs> yeah, I mean, frankly, I feel like we should all write to the U.S. government and say, you know what? You would protect Christians right. in this situation. Yeah, fucking get in there. Right. Because honestly, this is something that. Other for the foreign powers should bring some something to bear on these guys because that is unconscionable. Yeah, uh, he of course is not the only atheist condemned by the Saudi government. No, uh, you'll probably remember, um, if not the name, you'll remember the instance. Uh, Raif Badawi um, in 2013. Uh, he's a blogger who was sentenced to a thousand lashes, ten years in prison, yeah. and a fine for quote insulting Islam. Uh, this was one that I didn't remember from that instance. Uh, his lawyer was also jailed. Uh, oh, my God. For what the Saudi government called, uh, quote, making international organizations hostile to the kingdom. Because he enlisted help. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So. And, and for siding with a bad guy. Uh -huh. I think all defense attorneys should be charged with siding with a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, other cases, other crimes by the kingdom uh, include uh, sentencing a Turkish man to death for swearing at God, um, sentencing a high school teacher to prison, and 750 lashes for discussing Christianity and Judaism with students. Not promoting it, just mm. discussing it. Mm. Uh, and also sentencing a Yemeni man uh, to 21 years in prison for insulting Islam on Facebook. Uh, the list goes, of course, on and on and on. Hmm. Uh, these are crimes against humanity committed by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and yeah, our ally in peace. Yes, our, our good, good friend, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh, God, that's infuriating. Yeah. Well, uh, let's let's keep on with the infuriating thing, and uh, but on a, on a slightly less somber note and go to san antonio texas where oh. where their democrat mayor uh ivy taylor okay uh, and and to my mind condoleezza rice look alike i'm just gonna show you this picture am i wrong maybe a little bit she looks a lot like her i think anyway ivy taylor has uh it has been condemned by uh by the fufurf no. And other organizations. No, she's a Democrat. She's on our side, Dan. You would think so. And no, and she's being not. she's being defended by the Blaze. I decided to go with the Blaze article for my as my launch point for this. Wait, er everything right down. <laughs> it's all upside down and backwards. Everything's crazy. What's going on? Topsy turvy. What did this woman do? Uh she was asked at a forum uh what are the quote deepest systemic causes of generational poverty. Now, okay. a mayor has to deal with poverty. Yeah. You know, in a place like San Antonio, there's going to be poverty, and a mayor, you know, part of a mayor's job is to be... So let, let's spitball some things real quick. Okay. Failing education system. Sure. Right? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's probably number one through ten. Right. Is lack of... price some access to proper health care. Right. Would be a major issue. Um, let's but is that, else. but that's a chicken and egg thing. Uh, well, and also like a failing, just social, you know, social safety nets, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just like, just the, the, disenfranchisement from society. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. Her answer. Okay. Uh, the person who asked the question, uh, was from the San Antonio Christian Hope Research Resource Center. Okay. So she said. Uh, since you're with the Christian Coalition, I'll go ahead and pull it, put it out there that to me, it's broken people, people being not being in relationship with their creator and therefore oh, not being in a good relationship with their families and their <laughs> communities and not being productive members of society. Oh, fuck her. Broken. Frank, you're broken. Fuck her. Look at you. You're a broken man. Oh, my God. I know. Just, I'm looking at a hurts. broken man. It hurts how broken I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, fuck her. 
Also, really? The Blaze? The Blaze should say fuck her, too. Oh, everybody should. But no, they're, what they're saying is she didn't say that. I mean, because the headline that, that Fufurf and others are using is that uh, she's saying atheists are the cause of poverty. And she and the bla- or or something along those lines, uh, uh, and not too much of a stretch. The blaze is like, no, that's not what she said. <laughs> and then her own defense, she came out with this whole thing that was no. like, uh, like her 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 big defense was, I also said more than that. <laughs> She was all mad. Like, oh, the whole taken out of context? She's saying you took, you took it out of context. So I went yeah. and checked the context. Yeah. I mean, she said that, and then she said, but I don't work the, But I don't work with that. I don't work on that in my administration. Right. Because you can't, because that would be against the law, you dumb ding dong. Ding dong. But what you can do is not fucking, is talk about real issues. Right. Which the first thing she says is that, I mean, I, fuck whatever obviously that is not the cause of poverty at all but more importantly you think that atheists are broken right and let me tell you something we know atheists in san antonio yeah we're personal friends with atheists in san antonio some of the least broken people we know they are not broken (laughs) they are good salt of the earth folk yeah the just come entirely unbroken yeah in fact, fix ears or something, right? Yeah, they literally. Let me tell you something. We know some some very productive members of society. Yeah. Also, not poverty stricken. No, it, it's uh, it's worth noting. <laughs> Jesus Christ! How did those broken people have careers? Right. And own homes. Ugh. Oh my God! As a matter of fact, I would be willing to bet that if you looked at the statistics. Mm-mm. More atheists would le- fewer atheists would be in poverty as percentage to uh, like yeah. general population. It's dangerous. Well, it's just dangerous, a guess. Man. It's just a guess. Ooh. But I think you're right. I mean, we know the con- we know the correlation between non-religion and education. Yeah. And uh, that yeah. would be, that would lead me to believe that if we did a study, yeah. The broken people would be the Jesus ones. Oh, no. They're not broken. People aren't broken, you asshole. Oh. Human beings are not broken. I think some believers are. <clears throat> yeah. Let's throw it right back at them. Dan. There's a couple things that aren't working right. That's she's sure. broken. She's, she's broken. That's a broken person right there. Stupid. Making very dumb stupid. comments with her mouth. Yeah. Stop. I love that she here's in her in her actual response. She said the video clip that surfaced on social media this weekend is a dishonest, politically motivated repre- misrepresentation of my record on combating poverty. Politically now, motivated. It. It's not. Let me tell you something. The people that are most pissed at you are almost universally liberal. <laughs> they they want Democrats in your in your job. Right. It, it's not politically motivated. It's you just chat on a whole segment yeah. of society. Yeah. Dan. Yeah, what? Uh, so uh, the next time uh, you, you, you guys are expecting a baby, mm-hmm. I would strongly recommend that you avoid the Chinese province of Xinjiang. Well, shit, that was our whole plan. Uh, because they have limitations on names well, that now you we're, can choose what? for your baby. Well, now we're just not going to have a baby specifically, anymore. Specifically. I'm giving up the whole plan. Specifically, uh, Muslim baby names. What? You cannot name your baby anything Muslim. No, nothing Muslimy. Nothing. Can I name? No Muhammad. No, uh, no, Abdul. Islam, Quran, Saddam, Mecca, which I guess are all names people name for kids. Yeah. No references to stars or crescents. Oh, uh, like crescent moons. Maybe a croissant. Croissant. You could probably name your baby croissant. I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna. We're gonna have our baby, and I'm gonna just sort of like like near miss. Right. I'm gonna near miss. My baby's name is gonna be Napoleon. Ma- Mahamam. Mahamam um, Croissant <laughs> Beecher. Uh, something. 
could do like uh yeah uh these names are have been determined <clears throat> as unacceptable mm. uh in the uh fairly apparently muslim region uh it's home to uh roughly half of china's uh 23 million muslims so this was just this was just the non-muslim majority people fucking them over this well, was I mean, just this the, was the just... chinese government is atheist right right but this they is, don't they but... have they have no they don't accept any official like right of course but right? this is just a fuck you this is well they have uh the reasoning behind it dan the let reasoning me, let me pull it up because... the reasoning behind it is fuck you that's the reasoning behind it but then the excuse that they give is what well naming it it, it naming children these names uh leads to exaggerated religious fervor oh yeah well there you go so you, you, you yeah choose a good secular chinese name yeah uh and you know just at home call him muhammad right yeah right like what, what is that, this really going to achieve your nickname is have, muhammad yeah now. exactly right Ugh. like uh <laughs> of course the new law also doesn't just do that it also prohibits abnormal beards <laughs> what does that mean i don't know like, i've seen some abnormal beards lately let me tell yeah. you something you look at some chinese guys they've there are some abnormal beards that happen in like if you look at like kung fu movies and stuff <laughs> there are some abnormal beards <laughs> that's where you go <laughs> Talking about Chinese beards. <laughs> um, and of, uh, where was the other thing? Uh, oh, I lost it. Uh, oh, yeah, other things. Uh, face veils. Um, uh, anyone who, like a woman wearing a face veil or a man with a long beard, uh, cannot ride public transportation. What? And these kids also would be denied uh, being able to get sort of like their uh, like their initial sort of identity cards or whatever, which what? would also uh, limit their access to public education, household registration. Uh, let's see, healthcare, education, blah 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 blah, blah. social services. That's so weird. Oh, household registration is the card or thing that the documentation of their name i guess so huh yeah fascinating stuff don't go you know if you're thinking of some particular names don't go to china to yeah i guess i know it's been a trend lately it, yeah it's it's, so. a, it's it's baby naming tourism is a big industry now <laughs> you go to a place specifically to name your child Something um, illegal. Something of a of a faith that doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah, no, it's, it's a lovely. Great, it's a it's a really fun game. <laughs> Just to taunt the <laughs> authorities. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna tell a story of a book burning. Oh, not Sp good. Specifically, burning of the Bible. Hmm. A pile of Bibles. Really. A flame. Really. Sp even more specifically. Uh, King James versions. Oh my God! What and the Good News version of the Bible. What's the Good News? Have you heard the Good News? It's the Gospel, right? Yeah, yeah. These two versions being burned up by whom? I would think by an imam. No, by a by 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 a Christian by by an atheist group rather. No, no. I bet it's Christians. By a Pentecostal pastor oh. in Uganda. Oh, Ooh. really? Being denounced as fake and demo demonic. <laughs> of course. The King James Version. Demonic! The most glorious version of the Bible. Well, it's lovely. That, that's debatable. <laughs> there's, some nice, there's some nice sort of prose in it. It's true. Uh, really? But it is demonic! Yeah. Do you want to know why? Uh, oh boy. You have any guesses yeah, on this? I, I actually don't have any guesses. What could, what, what problem could these two versions of the Bible have that are, that's so egregious that pastor, oh, and I'm so happy. I'm going to say this name. It makes me so happy. Pastor Aloysius Bugingo. My guess is maybe they don't <laughs> condemn homosexuality enough. Is that it? No. They 
What could it be? Aloysius Bugingo. He's mad. Oh, no. Because these versions say Holy Ghost instead of Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's his whole thing? Oh. That's it? Pastor Bubi- Bugingo is furious. We don't believe in ghosts, I guess. We believe in spirits. <laughs> okay. Aloysius Bugingo. So what what version of the Bible does this guy like? Uh, does he have one? He basically just anything that says the right word for for fairy for for. So his whole thing, none. his whole main hangup, <laughs> is a choice of words. The, the, the two words that mean the same thing. The Bible in the Bibles that he doesn't like were the handiwork of devil worshippers. <laughs> he says. Oh, this guy sounds like a peach. Oh, I just, I love it. You know, for so now there's now there's Christians all over the world who are like, no, you can't burn the Bible. Oh, they're condemning. They're mad. No, he's he, uh, and he's also mad because uh, the words fasting and Lent are omitted from the books. Oh no. Uh, he ba- yeah. So he he collected all of the anyone in his in his congregation that had the wrong version of the Bible. They brought him in and had a burning. Oh yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Good for him. He's doing stuff, Dan. He's doing the Lord's work. He doesn't agree with it. He gets something done. That's right. I you know my hats off to this guy. <laughs> He's standing up for what he thinks is right. Indeed, you're. So, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Feldman is getting behind <laughs> Pastor Aloysius <laughs> Bugingo. He is <laughs> only sort of on a strict, uh, sort of on how effective you are right. at getting your thing done. Yeah, that's what I'm. That props to him. Hey, you made the news in the U.S., so <laughs> you did something right, or you did something. You did something. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have anything you'd like to say about, if you would just like to say the words Aloysius Bugingo, uh, you can write to us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, Aloysius Bugingo uh, would do it if, if he had that phone number. Anyway, <laughs> I just keep wanting to say it. That's all I wanted to say in the whole world. The rest of the show is just going to be me saying Aloysius Bugingo. Uh, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. And while you're on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge or request to join. Uh, it's a closed group, but we'll let you in. All right, Dan. Hey, guess what I just did? <sighs> what? I just sent a friend request to Aloysius Bugingo. <laughs> okay, all right. I did. We've got some. Uh, <laughs> we got an audio clip for you guys. Okay. Uh, this is really, uh, in a lot of ways, well, it is partially to help us kind of set up what we're going to be talking about later, but it's really just so that our listeners can hear we want you to know what a what what mormon so sort of that there's a mormon <laughs> cadence and to this, like public speaking now this is a special one because it's a woman yeah so it is slightly different but every mormon listening will know immediately what's what what is happening and what's going to happen they will be able to if they pause it if you're listening next to a mormon and you're not a mormon pause it like 4 seconds in and have them predict what's going to ha- what what's going to happen. <laughs> They'll get something right. My next story is about a woman I'll call Mary. She was the daughter of faithful pioneer parents who had sacrificed much for the gospel. She had been married in the temple and was the mother of ten children. She was a talented woman who taught her children how to pray, to work hard, and to love each other. She paid her tithing, and the family rode to a church together on Sunday in their wagon. Though she knew it was contrary to the word of wisdom, she developed the habit of drinking coffee and kept a coffee pot on the back of her stove. 
She claimed that the Lord will not keep me out of heaven for a little cup of coffee. But because of that little cup of coffee, she could not qualify for temple recommend. And neither could those of her children who drank coffee with her. She lived to a good old age, and she did eventually qualify to re-enter and serve in the temple. But only one of her ten children had a worthy temple marriage, and a great number of her posterity, which is now in its fifth generation, live outside of the blessings of the restored gospel she believed in and her forefathers sacrificed so much for. <laughs> Oh, it's so sad. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, listening at home or wherever you are with your earbuds in your ears, uh, if you were confused at why this woman was weeping, I understand that. (laughs) That makes sense to me. Although the the former Mormons will. But all the Mormons Uh, will be like, yep, yep. (laughs) That's how it goes. Oh, turn on you... the waterworks for nothing. Oh, was... oh. First of all, she's lying. Oh, that story is this made is totally the fuck fucking up. made up story. And how do I know? How do we know, Dan? Because that's all they do. <laughs> well, no, well, no, because it wasn't until 1921 when well, who was Heber J. Grant, one of the church, more, he was prophets. president of the church, yeah. right? He was the one who linked the word of wisdom officially and finally to being able to go into the temple. That wasn't until 1921. So you're telling me five generations have passed? Well, you know, if you go 20, if, 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 if she talks about if, going to let, church on a wagon, right? No, no. She, oh yeah, she did. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's a problem with your math there, lady. Yeah. Because because yes, she could have drank coffee and still gone to the temple. Yeah. In fact, they're like around 1900. <laughs> there's actually a number of very high up people in the church documented to drink wine, drink coffee. Yeah. Uh, one of them uh, enjoyed a little nip of brandy every once in a while for quote medicinal purposes. Right. That guy got sick a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're going to talk about more of this. We're going to talk about all of this right. later in the show. But, but she's, she's a liar. She's full of fucking shit. Yeah. But that's what they do. I'm going to I'm going to tell you a story about a woman. I'm going to call her Mary. And I've completely because made I it up. made it up and I can call her whatever I want. <laughs> if I want to, I can call her Aloysius Bogingo. Yes, you could. She could. You could, Dan. Okay. Anyway, uh yeah, so now you know what <laughs> what Mormon what women m- sound like. And that's in general conference. That means that's how they give talks at church. But yes, be that but matronly here's... woman who will get up and do that. She'll be a church. mom, and she. Will... But here's the thing: that's the polished version. What we just played for you is the polished yeah. version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the thing that you hear at church is so much worse because it's not a well crafted story. It's not like there's. Ugh. Oh my God! It's a nightmare. No, they'll just read that story, right? <laughs> direct from the from the ensign. Yeah, they'll read her words word for word, and then relate them to a story that isn't actually related at all about how their kid fell off of a tree when they were six and they felt the spirit. But did you see what I did there? I called it the ensign. Yeah, Ensign Magazine, also known as the ensign. The ensign. If you're if you're in uh, if you're on the inside. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, well, we had some folks write in to us, and uh, we, yeah, we had various missives. Uh, I'll start with Jeff, who says, hey guys, love the show. I grew up very Mormon in the Midwest. Ooh. In the Midwest. Mormon in the Midwest, different than Mormon in Utah. That's true. Must have taken me five years to recover from that psychological nutcake factory. Anyway, <laughs> now I have now I have to move to Orem, Utah. From Nobody Hawaii ha- Whoa. for work. Whoa, that got worse really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> he says, I'm thrilled to have a job, but my girlfriend and I are a bit worried about trying to start a life in the Mormon version of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> D 
Do you have any advice, help, <gasps> tips, etc.? How to find oh. rational or even just interesting folks or how to thrive in Utah Valley? Yeah. Yeah, drive to Salt Lake City. Yeah, get on the front runner. <laughs> Come on up, have a few drinks. Oh. Get on the front runner and go back. You know, it's funny because my initial impulse is the same impulse that I have when anybody says, hey, I'm, oh, shit, I, I might have to move to Utah. Is it going to be okay? Am I going to be okay? And my initial impulse is like, yeah, it's fucking great here. Right. I love it. Well, that's because you're in Salt Lake. I'm in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Orem, you're not in Orem, Dan. Orem, dude. I, that's next to Provo. That's some. That's like, yeah, Mormon Saudi Arabia sounds about right. Only instead of like executing you with execution, they execute you with passive aggressiveness. <laughs> they they it's death by a thousand glances. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally true. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, what was his name again? James Jeff Jeff. Uh, Jeff, there, there are, uh, Starbucks at least now. Are there? Yeah. There's one, uh, right there by the, uh, university mall on university parkway. Oh, that's new. That's it. Ladies in, and gentlemen. That's in, that's in Orem. Uh, oh, getting a cup of coffee is a trick. I'll it's, tell you. And it, it, you're just, it, maybe learn you know, to love wh- soda. whatever sort of learn to love sugary soda drinks. You will get yeah. fat. Yeah. Good luck. You are going to get there. There are a lot of drive through soda places yeah. down there, which is a weird phenomenon. Dirty sodas, they yeah. call them. Yeah. It's... Which is, which all that means, you'd think that that means, like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Mormons yeah. were getting left out of, like, waiting in line in their cars, and they love waiting in line for things. <laughs> Apparently. And so they created their own little drive through soda places. Where you get like 64 ounces of some god-awful concoction that includes like Coca-Cola and... Yeah, they and load like, it up with all those sugary Yeah, like, like coconut syrup and, yeah. and lime syrup. And, and then they have treats. They have like baked goods and shit. God, it's just designed to make you fat. And diabetic. But you do it... But you what you do is you get the diet so that... <laughs> You, you don't. Off you don't a, get fat. A good place if it says diet on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Orem itself, like you'd be better off living in Provo, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I know they're like adjacent to each other, but like Provo, at least, yeah, it's it is the home of BYU. But there's something going on in Provo. There's nothing going on in. Go Orem. to the bars, bar, bar. There's I a bar on I Main can't Street. can't think of more than Provo. one bar in is Provo. The, oh, my is God. It, is it the one on Main Street? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only one I can think of. Okay. Go to the bar. <laughs> You'll find some kindred spirits there. Yeah. Um, join a motorcycle gang? <laughs> um, I got nothing for you, man. You're, now, here's the deal. But you're only... They're nice people, as in the sense that they'll... They won't... Yeah, they won't kill you. They're nice. They're nice. They're nice enough. They're like step 40 and nice. Yeah. It's, it's all very fake and forced nice, but they're nice. Uh, they're not They're not going to be rude to your face. No. About anything. No. Uh, There's that. They'll, but they'll, they'll go behind your back. Oh, be, be, be prepared. You'll to be, be okay. You'll be okay. No, no, no. There will be nice people there. I'm trying to. Just, I'm trying to look on the bright side of this thing. Be prepared <laughs> to have some people not understand that you're not Mormon. No, Jeff. Does, this is a thing. Right. This is actually a weird Utah County thing. Some of them can't wrap their head around the fact that you're not Mormon. Right. Like the 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 way they talk to you. They they talk very inside. Like Mormonism, here's the thing. Lingo to you. Jeff has and the they advantage. Can't adapt it. They've never had right. to deal with people who aren't Mormon. Now Jeff has the advantage to he he'll he gets the Mormon speak. Now that's true. So that's. <clears throat> but uh, he said there there's a wife involved here, right? Yeah, yeah, girlfriend, what, girlfriend. So here's what, what's her situation. I don't know. Here's what I would say though. Don't tell them that you've ever been Mormon. Don't let on. Oh yeah, yeah. That's smart. what you want to do. That's actually is become really smart. their. Like, all of your neighbors become their pet non-Mormon. Right. Their token non-Mormon friend. They'll love it. Well, They'll talk to their friends about, I have a neighbor now who's not in a member, but he is so great. 
You know, yes, he drinks coffee. Yes, he drinks alcohol. And I don't. But you but know I've what? I've never seen him drunk. He's so nice. <laughs> Do three nice things in the neighborhood. Be openly non-Mormon. And you'll become like everybody's like favorite person. Help everyone move. No, no, no. You see a moving truck. Let them help you move. It's the opposite. <laughs> I'm, I disagree with Frank. Do nothing nice for them. Let them do nice for you, and you will be in their graces forever. Let them invite you. Go to the ward. Go to the ward picnic. Don't go to the church. Right. Don't go to church with them. They're going to have. That, then, yeah. then they'll feel like they're making progress, and they'll try to progress with you. Yeah. And but, they will have an ice cream social at some point. Yeah. You need to go to that. Go, go yeah, to the go things. Go to stuff that's in the cultural hall. Go to Don't things. Don't do things that are going to be in the chapel. Go to events, and then, uh, and then they'll love you. Yeah. They will adore you. They yeah. will enfold you into their bosoms. But you just made a bunch of the most boring friends imaginable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be able to go to the movies with them because they're going to be like, do you want to see <laughs> Moana for the 15th time? <laughs> it's the only one we're allowed to see. It's also the only one showing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> God, come to Salt Lake a lot. Come to Salt Lake a lot. You'll be okay. I love it. Hi, Frank and Dan. Uh, this is from Kendra. Hi, Frank and Dan. I was listening to your latest episode and heard the question asked by a listener in Georgia about a God-free version of Alcohols Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm. As an atheist in West Virginia, I know finding these, res these sources can be difficult hmm. uh, in a predominantly Christian area. And... Frank, we had a lot of people write into us with this same uh, suggestion, so I am going to make the suggestion. Okay. Um, the Thinking Atheist podcast did an episode a few weeks back on this very topic. Oh. Here are the sources he provided for secular recovery. I, now, I'm going to read these, uh, these sources, these uh, URLs. Right. But I highly recommend checking out Seth Andrews. Uh, he did a, a whole show. It's like... An hour longer than his regular show because oh, no way. He, because it's an, an important topic. Right, uh, people need the help. S the thinking atheist find it wherever you find us because he's going to be everywhere we are. Right, um, on whatever podcast except on our website, he won't be there. <laughs> if you're listening to us on our <laughs> website, don't look for him there. Um, but go, but go to like you know I, iTunes or whatever. Right, and find the thinking atheist. It's only a couple. It's only a few weeks back. Uh, I believe it's episode. I don't know what episode number it is. I'm going okay, to look it up, but, though. Okay. So, uh, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to read a few of the uh, of the URLs that he uh, came up with for this sort of thing. So, seculartherapy.org. Awesome. Uh, Lifering.org. The-Sinclair-Method.com. Oh. Uh, the Sinclair Method? Yeah. I don't I I don't know I don't Spell know a lot Sinclair. about Claire S I N C L A I R excellent uh S O S sobriety dot org okay smart recovery dot org okay and refuge recovery dot org fantastic yeah but in the meantime you can also go and check out Seth's whole thing uh the episode is called addiction recovery twelve steps and beyond um. It was only a couple weeks ago, and right now, if you're listening currently, if you're listening later on, uh, he doesn't number his episodes, so... Is there a date? Uh, yeah, the date is April 11th, 2017. Awesome. Cool. So track that down, uh, get and get the help you need, and we support you. Okay. Do, do, we have, uh, do we have some folks to thank? We do. Um, we have two new patrons on Patreon. Oh, good. Uh... Both coming in at the faithful level, uh, we have Danilo and Brent. Ah, oh, blessed be ye. Yes, indeed. So thank you so much uh, to the both of you. And uh, if you'd like to become a patron yourself, uh, you can do so by uh, going to our website, thankgodimatheist.com, and clicking on the support tab. And rem should... remember that if you come in, uh, there are different rewards for different levels uh one of if you come in what level gets the uh the diary that we're doing three dollars at three dollars per episode if you yeah. come, and and that that's what level what do we call that that is or, the beatified beatified level. if yeah. we if if you beatify yourself uh -huh. with us 
then yeah, you'll get to hear uh, special content created just for you mm -hmm. every week. Nobody else gets to hear it. If you share it with other people, we will sue you. <laughs> That's not true. Um, how would we know, Dan? Uh, we, uh, Even if we did know, we'd just... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, and of course, uh, big thanks to James. Uh, he continues to be our top donor, uh, Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior, James Christ. Uh, how we bless him. How we honor him. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the things, and the what, and the blah, blah, blah. Amen. Amen. Okay, Dan. Here it comes. Here it comes, baby. Doctrine and Covenants. Okay, so Frank just said two words, or three words. I guess there's uh, an and in there uh, that mean nothing to most people. But Mormons, that means something to. Yeah. The Doctrine and uh -huh. Covenants. Oh, yeah. Uh, a book of scripture. Yes. Written by Joe Smith. Uh-huh. Largely. Uh, yeah. And the Lord. <laughs> written by Joseph Smith. Indeed. And uh, the Lord. Yes, yes. <laughs> the, well, the, probably mainly, I mean, it was written down mm. by Joseph Smith. Right. It as was given to him. As dictated. Mm -hmm, by the Lord. By the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, okay, so the Doctrine and Covenants is a wacky book. It's just, a, it's a lot of rules. It's rules, man. And it, there's a lot of them. A lot, and a lot of it is specific to, like, not just Joseph Smith's time. No. But, like, that week for Joe Smith. Like, <laughs> it's specific to, like, his personal problem that he's having right now with somebody. Oh, wait, God just gave me a rule for that. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. kooky. Yeah. How specific it get it can get on, at times. Uh and it starts, and it's so fun. Uh, you know, I was saying all that stuff about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Doctrine and Covenants, section 27, mm. verse 1, yeah, reads, Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Lord, your God, and your Redeemer, whose work is quick and powerful. Wow. Wow. Tremble. And Tremble. Then it, and then it tells you about, about wine. <laughs> yeah okay so let, let's go through the sort of um the word of wisdom the word of wisdom right as <laughs> as understood by the 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 main line the mainstream mormon church oh okay right? so we'll start with what we grew up with let's start with what we grew up with what we thought was the word of wisdom right <clears throat> right the word of wisdom was the rules on what you could eat and what you couldn't, could, specifically what you can't eat. Right. Or drink. Or drink. Mainly, well, but they get really hung up on the drink. Yeah. That's where most of the attention is uh, is laid. And that's where all of our non-Mormon listeners, like, sort of, they, half of their understanding of what Mormonism is before right. they started listening to this show probably right. consisted of no alcohol and no coffee. Right. <clears throat> and, and no, no caffeinated tea, no tea, no tea, because you can have an herbal tea. Well, that was my understanding growing up. My mom drank herbal tea and yeah. that, and made that distinction. Yeah. But that's, like, that's, so, so yes, the, the, the sort of modern lay person in the church, right. they know no alcohol, no coffee, no tea. Right. Except herbal. Right. But that's not what it says in the book. No, no, not even. Not, <laughs> not close. Uh, strangely, so the big discovery. I, I, I'm gonna. I'm. We're, I'm not gonna bury the headline any further than this. Okay. Our big discovery, yours and mine today, as we read through this stuff, is that this thing was crafted so that beer is okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's the shock of my life right now. Yeah. Is that beer is clearly okay within the word of wisdom? Yeah, yeah. Because, <clears throat> well, because the whole line. Do you have it pulled up, or do you? Did you? Were yeah, you here we, here we go. Um, <clears throat> so, Doctrine and Covenants section eighty nine is 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 the 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 word of wisdom section, uh, verse five, uh, that inasmuch as any man drinketh wine or strong drink among uh -huh. you, behold, it is not good, 
Neither, and then there's a bunch of stuff that's like blah blah blah, and behold, uh, but there's stuff about sacramental wine, and that's crazy. Yeah, that's nutball because I did not know that they originally did the sacrament with wine. Because let me tell you something. See, that really surprised me because I, you'd think I would know. That was part like I, that I'm was part of the discussion that we had around it. I'm hip to the right. wacky stuff. I'm hip to the to the to the history. I don't know how I how it, it escaped yeah, me. No, and so in Doctrine and Covenants twenty verse seventy nine, that's the uh, um, the uh, blessing. Or not the blessing. How to bless the, How to bless the, the, the sacrament. sacrament, right? It's a set prayer. It's a, Mormons right. have like one set prayer in their entire thing. Everything right. else is like imp- improvised. And so so there's the prayer for the bread. And then in verse 79, there's the, pre- the prayer for the wine. Right. But Which, that's not the one that you actually say uh, as a 16-year-old in blessing the, the sacrament Every at fucking week at church, there's right. the sacrament. And uh, no. You can go ahead and read it. So it's, uh, oh God, the eternal father, we ask thee in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine for the, to the souls of all those who drink of it. And then it goes on. Uh, yeah, but we the, say water. Hearing wine in there. It's is jarring. A little, little kooky. It's jarring because Mormons use water. Right. It's bread and water. It's, it's prison rations. I mean, they were clearly, Joseph was clearly like ripping off other, other Eucharists, other, oh, other, yeah. other, I mean, even so much Sacramental. so that it talks about um, uh, the manner of administering the wine. Uh, it talks about how the, the priest or elder should take the cup also and say the prayer. Yeah. Um, which that sounds like a, a very, you know, Protestant type setup or yeah. a Catholic setup, right? The one big the chalice mm-hmm. that has the wine in it that's being blessed but that's not how mormons do it but the vessel with the pestle has the brew that is true oh really mhm huh. anyway uh so yeah that was a shock to me but but also the fact that now where where was that barley wheat where was that verse the verse that had all of that stuff in it because because let me tell you well that's that's the part that's talking about right i got uh, it. the I grain it, yes. and what's uh, all grain is ordained for the use of man and of beasts to be the staff of life, not only for man, but for the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and all the wild animals, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then there was a part where uh, wheat for man, here's a good, here we go, nevertheless, wheat for man and corn for the ox and oats for the horse and rye for the fowls for the swine and for the beasts and, of the, uh, and for all beasts of the field. And then you read this to me earlier today, yeah. and you blew my damn mind. <laughs> and barley, for all useful animals, and for mild drinks, as also other grain. Uh-huh. They're not talking about making, like, uh, some kind of hot-brewed beverage. No. Because they're it's talking not, about strong drinks earlier. He's not earlier. Po- talking about post here. Right. So he's talking about because they're they're talking about strong drink and they're talking about wine and liquor, right? Earlier. Right. And now they're talking about mild drink. Well, what kind of mild drink do you make from barley? It's beer. <laughs> they're talking about beer is okay. <laughs> and that's how it was understood. Oh my god. Like, that's how it was. Oh my god. Understood. I am shocked. Yeah. Because let me tell you something. Current interpretation. Does not include beer. No. The word of wisdom, uh, if you look on LDS.org, which is the church's web's own website, mm. uh, the word of wisdom, it says, the word of wis- in the word of wisdom, the Lord revealed that the following substances are harmful. Oh. A, it doesn't really, does it say harmful? It says. It says it's not good. It says, uh, not for the belly. Oh yeah, it and it, refu- it repeatedly says, uh, and again and again, hot drinks are not for the body or belly. It doesn't say harmful. Anyway, right. and um, uh, let me let me what hot drinks? Right. Could the Lord please be more specific? Here's the thing. That's that's a that's now the later prophets clarified mm-hmm. that hot drinks means coffee and tea that have caffeine in it. 
and definitely not, in no way does dr- hot drinks mean hot chocolate because we would all die. <laughs> Mormons without their hot cocoa? Mormons. Oh, my God. I feel like that's like half of their blood is made of hot chocolate. <laughs> In the winter time, uh, yeah, no, I know it's well because you want a hot beverage. Yeah, the the human body responds so nicely to this warm. Oh, there's nothing hot better. Beverage going in. Oh, there's nothing better. It's delightful. A wassail. Oh, you kidding me? Oh my god! Delightful, unbelievable. Uh, yeah. So, so like, here's the thing. There is now, so now, as Frank alluded to earlier, by the 20s, when Joseph Smith did this, like revealed all of this in the 18, uh, 1830s, 1833, uh, is when this section of the Doctrine and Covenants was was uh, revealed, was written. Um, it was not it was, meant to be a commandment. These are suggestions. Yeah. These are these are ideas, uh, and he basically stole it all from Sylvester Graham, mm. inventor of the Graham cracker, mm. and uh, and and a, and a vegetarian. My, Joseph Smith sort of eased some meat back into the thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, Sylvester Graham was 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 largely the sort of. There was a movement in the United States. Uh, what, what's his name? Kellogg. Oh yeah, J- John a- John Harvey Kellogg. They uh, love grain. Jumped onto this movement as yeah. well. It was like grain is good. Yeah, meats less good. Right. No alcohol. No. Uh, none of you, you know all of this stuff. sounds awful. Yeah, it's the worst. And you want to know what most of it was all about in both, in the case of both Sylvester Graham and Kellogg. What's that? Preventing masturbation. <laughs> Everything was about preventing masturbation. It was their... F- so you have a piece of meat and you just need to go... It, it, <laughs> it riles the blood. Shut it up. riles the blood. You're adding blood to your blood. Oh, it, my God. You'll suddenly... Now I, now I need to rub one out. Yeah. These no. guys were obsessed with it. Obsessed with it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's, that's where Joseph Smith... Town. I mean, he just basically said, and then he said uh, he doesn't like tobacco. Uh, that was a good move on his part. And again, verily I say unto you now, he, let's let's point out now that interpretation has happened and continues to happen with all of this. Right. As you as you said, people. It says no tea. Right. Many Mormons go pretty happily to herbal teas. Yeah. Even though it says no tea, specifically. Well, because it was understood what, you know, tea was. Well, people people have interpreted it to be understood as caffeine. Mm-hmm. But that's in, but nothing in, in that, Mormon canon says anything about caffeine. No, I know. But that's why. I don't know <clears> if it's still the case. But when I was a student at BYU, all the soda fountains. Soda in, machines. Soda whatever, machines yeah. in the... Uh, in the uh, Cougar Eat and yeah. throughout campus, all the vending machines had uh, caffeine-free Coke. Right. And Only. caffeine-free Diet Coke. Only. Yeah. There was no caffeine to be purchased on the entire campus. Even though... College students with no caffeine. The Mormon... How does this even work? Right? Exactly. Mormon... And let me tell you something, kids. Mormonism... Like, like Mormon, pro, Mormon leaders actually had to come out recently and say... Uh, no, it doesn't say anything about caffeine. Mm. Uh, they didn't say caffeine is okay. Right. They said it doesn't say anything about caffeine. Right. Uh, because uh, people get really snooty. Yeah. Uh, in Orem. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> you it, brace yourself. <laughs> a lot of caffeine-free Diet Coke down there. Um, oh, my God. Oh. But let me tell you. But so in terms of like the interpretations of things. Uh. Here's a good one to interpret. Uh, Verily I say unto you, all wholesome herbs God hath ordained for the constitution, nature, and use of man. Hmm. What do we call an herb, Frank? An herb. What? No, well, but there's no prohibition. Herb. There's prohibition herb. on. Uh, there's a prohibition on tobacco. Right. But w- herb. What about that wacky tobacco? <laughs> Wait, it says that you can use it? It says herb is good for man and beast? Hells yeah. Shut the fuck up. 
I'm just saying. In my, yeah. Now, no Mormon would ever interpret this to say that. That I I think if you oh, asked any Mormon to the person, they would say that that marijuana is absolutely forbidden. Hmm. But let me. But as it becomes more and more legal in more and more places, yeah. I wonder how they're going to handle that because it does not say anything. Okay, I, I sorry, Dan. I just can't see a bunch of Mormons sitting around uh, <sighs> smoking the reefer. No, but I want them to. <laughs> So much I want them to. I, and I and and it would be hard for them to construct an argument against other than I just have a dark feeling about it, which is right. what they would go to. Uh just talking about pot real quick. You know, you know I just went on vacation to Amsterdam. You did indeed. Brussels and Britain. The funny thing about coming back from Amsterdam is that for whatever reason, people still still to this day feel the need to ask oh did 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 you have fun did did, did you smoke some pot uh-huh. it's like um i don't really smoke pot here and i can get it just fine yeah why would i smoke pot in amsterdam like for, it was for, just like this it's just it's, i know it's novel yeah it's the novel it's like of like, like being um, in a public place i smoked plenty of pot in college and in the years immediately after like i don't not really a pot guy. It's not pot. Yeah. I, I, uh, sorry. They they have weed here. Yeah. It's, it's here. It's available. I, I, w- okay. Thanks. Uh, oh. But nonetheless. Um, but Dan, yeah. how, like, I remember for myself uh, coming out of Mormonism, yeah. the word of wisdom was a little tricky for me because I was fine with there not being God, yeah. right? But I had bought into the word of wisdom sort of completely. Right. Mm. That it was, you know, I, I actually remember having the thought of, well, to be honest, it's not like there's all this good that comes from tobacco. Right. Right. And I, if I don't need caffeine, why do I need to drink coffee? Yeah. And I don't really do i really need alcohol like i've heard of like yeah okay wine there's supposedly like some health benefits but right. there's also like a lot of bad that seems to come from it and like so i had this big long thing this you're big talking you're discussion. talking my language my friend because right. i had the same like I, you go because let me t- as a young mormon uh-huh you've gone through all of this you yeah. have talked yourself into the right. righteousness of all of this in yeah. In like other ways than just like the, the, you know, for the Bible tells me so it's right. like, it's like you, you know, you wanted, you, you wanted to get right on this. Right. And you have to know all like the real world <clears throat> justifications mm-hmm. and reasons why you shouldn't go anywhere near that shit. Right. Right. And so like, what was, so you had a similar thought process, <laughs> but what was that first, like, what was first for you? Was it coffee? Was it alcohol? Did you smoke a cigarette? Like, oh my what, God. where here's, did you start? Here's what's shocking. Yeah. I leave the church. Yeah. I'm done with it. I don't have any use for it in my life. I'm an atheist. Right. It's still years before I actually drink. Pretty much the same here. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was in my... I, I left the church basically at age 19. I, early 20s for me. It was probably like 90... Like, actually telling people that I was out 98. So I would have been 23. Three, and then I can just continue. I mean, I guess it's just the lifestyle I was used to, or whatever. But I just continued not drinking. Yeah. I mean, I would taste a thing here. I would sip a thing there. Right. I can. T- I didn't get into alcohol or coffee till my late twenties. Really, I had my first. I remember having my first beer at uh, Twilight Lounge. <laughs> oh, that was my first beer. Nice little uh, dive bar in town. The uh, it was after um, a, a, one of my professors had a film shoot that a bunch of us helped okay. him out on, and and he was like, "Come on down, I'll buy a bunch of pictures." Blah blah blah. Yeah. So that I was like, I was sitting there, and I'd been out of the church now for a few years, and or at least a couple, and I was like, "Well, it's going to happen sooner or later that I'm going to at least try." Uh-huh. Right. And uh, and so I, I had a little a little pint of beer, huh? Maybe two. I might have had two. Yeah, and had a good time that night. Okay, and it was probably a little while before I had another 
<laughs> another taste of alcohol. I cannot for the life of me remember where coffee fit into the whole thing. I can't either. I I, I do I remember to coffee pretty quickly though. Yeah, I remember right. that I that I had to go through a process to enjoy any of these things. Oh really? Here well okay. Ooh. I will coffee say this. I liked almost instantly. The first time I got drunk. Yeah. It was a specific thing. I was in college, so this was early 20s. This was mid 20 like 24, 25. I okay. I, I there's some time I took some time off before I went to college. So this was probably 25, 24. Okay. I was with my friend. We, we had, we had gone to the American, American college theater festival competition okay. in Fresno, California. Huh? We were on our way back. We stopped in Vegas on the way back because, because that, we, we needed a sort of midway point. We didn't want to press through it the whole time. And me and my friend, he was also a former Mormon, mm -hmm. decided we were both going to get drunk. Ah, is this anyone I know? No. Okay. Uh, so we're going to get drunk and we're going to do it. Uh, and, but we have no experience with how to do this and we, <laughs> d we consult exactly nobody. Oh no. So we go across the street from our hotel room to a liquor store and buy, I basically say to the, to the, Guy at the liquor store, what's the shortest distance between here and drunk? <laughs> no. And oh, he's just like, you... he's just like liquor. He's just, I don't know, whatever. And I said, okay, fine. Uh, I've heard of Jack Daniels. Give me that fifth of Jack Daniels. Oh, you knew it was a fifth? No, I did not. Okay. I pointed at a bottle. <laughs> and we took it back to the hotel room and polished the thing off between the two of us. Oh, fuck no. And ordered a, a Domino's pizza. This was your first time getting drunk. Yeah. Also my first time getting horribly sick. First yeah. of all, we did nothing. We didn't understand that just being drunk isn't fun in and of itself. Isn't fun in and of itself. You go do a thing. <laughs> Woohoo! Fun. <laughs> Sitting in the hotel room, just experiencing drunkenness. <laughs> this was a Mormon boy's view of like how to do this. Uh, we, I, we had no idea what to do. Right. So we both got drunk. I got violently ill. Yeah. Had to feel shitty the entire drive back to Salt oh, Lake yeah. City from that Vegas. Would be, that would be awful. Oh. Oh. Uh, my first actual drunk. It took me a long time to forgive whiskey. Let yeah. me tell you something. I did not drink whiskey for a long time. After I mean, that. at least you started with something legit. You did it wrong, but you started with something legit. Yeah, I did. You're about to say a, at an twenty, awful thing. like five or twenty six, right at this uh -huh. point. I did what uh, apparently I've learned uh, teenagers end up doing a lot, yes, yes. which is finding some uh, schnapp <laughs> of some sort, <laughs> some schnapps. Oh, God. Uh, this, in this case, peach schnapps. God. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my friend Scotty and I went over to this girl Rebecca's place <laughs> that was also in our program and uh, this is college right uh -huh. and uh, this is a this is some time had passed between like those first couple beers and this instance yeah. I still had not like I'd probably had a few beers here and there but I still hadn't been drunk right right and still to this day, I don't know how we actually got drunk off this ship. Oh, it's not like it's really all that strong. No. Right? And, uh, oh, my God. That's also one of the few times I've actually thrown up. Yeah. From from drinking. Yeah, well, you're gonna. Right? Yeah, that was awful. What a terrible... And I just... I still, to this day, just blame Rebecca, that girl. Right? God. Like, damn her. Yeah. Because, come on. She she was the one who had it. She was the one who yeah. grew up with booze around. Right. And Scotty to a lesser extent with the booze, but he didn't grow up Mormon, but it didn't sound like yeah, kind of I a mean, teetotaling family a little getting bit. Getting drunk know? on schnapps is something you only do when you are 16 years old <laughs> and you're, you've raided somebody's parents. Right. Why did she have peach schnapps sitting around? Why peach fucking schnapps? Right. Who even has that, first of all? Right. Maybe some sort of minty schnapp that you... I don't know what you're going to do with it, like but... cinnamon schnapps or... Sure. I could dream up something to do with that. Yeah. Peach fucking schnapps. What, is she having, like, fuzzy navels? Right. But, like, no. without the... 
Like, wh- uh, who, who is this person? And right. why is she in college with schnapps? I just looked it up. Schnapps tends to be 30 to 40 proof. Oh, yeah, you can get drunk off that. You can get drunk off that, but yeah. my God. You, you got to work on it. Work at it. So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. And yeah. So, so this is, but this is also, I mean, 16 year olds do it because they don't know what it is or right. they're just raiding their parents' liquor cabinet or it's all they could get their hands on. Yes. We were, uh, we were both. 25 year olds, like you, you do that because you, 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 you never saw your parents drink. Right. They didn't, you, you never were exposed to it in any sort of normal way. Right. And it, this also leads to a lot of the binge drinking problem here in Salt Lake. Yeah. Because all the former Mormon kids don't do, know what, what they don't know how to drink. They don't know what responsible drinking looks like or yeah. what even fun drinking looks like. Right. It takes years to finally develop decent habits and, and practices well, around, and it, around drinking. It's funny because I don't know a lot know, of people. I don't know how this idea got into my head what? because I don't remember it ever being said. But somehow, to a Mormon brain, drink, alcoholic beverage, is linked only to drunkenness. Right. Yes. Like, there's no... That's absolutely true. There's no middle ground at all. And that's not like... That's not like... That's just how you think of it. Right. That's just... You don't know that there's any other way. It's just... You don't know the warm, relaxed feeling of a glass of wine. That, That concept... Just doesn't work in the Mormon. Doesn't mind. occur to you, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Like like taking the edge off, right, with a glass of of scotch at the end of the evening, right. The nightcap, right. None of that. Like you assume as a Mormon, the only reason to drink alcohol is shit hammered drunk. Well, and you also think that that one drink that that's oh that's and, instant, yeah. You, that's where you that are. might do it to you, right. This everyone right here. We just explained why Utah's liquor laws are stupid. Well, yeah. Because it's a bunch of Mormons making these laws. Yeah. They don't know what any of it means. Right. And uh, they have no concept of what it is, what it's for, what it does, why. Right. And so they just make rules. Yeah. Arbit- arbitrary rules that don't make uh, an they, ounce of sense. But they make real sense in their minds. Oh, in their minds, they make tons of sense. Yeah, if you have any alcohol in your body, you are drunk, and you right. must not drive, and you must not do anything, and you must never, you must not look at a person. Uh, you can't if you have any alcohol, and you you walk down a street. That's against the law. No, that's not. That's not. Law. But anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have uh, an interesting history with prohibited mm, food substances. or drinks. Uh, let us know, or non-prohibited. Maybe you were, maybe you grew up in a cult that, like, smokes a lot of peyote. That'd be interesting too. Tell us about it. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yes, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and uh, click the like button. And while you're there, you can search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge. Request to join. It's a closed group, but we'll let you in. Because we like you. Of course we will let you in. Uh, and if you're, if you're there, uh, you know what? I'm going to say this. Uh... A tragedy struck one of our one of our mods. Oh no! This week, uh, Danny, our mod, uh, in and and stalwart of the members only lounge, his house that he lived in burnt down. Oh my god! Uh, really? uh, he lost most of his belongings. Oh no! Shit went wrong. So oh. uh, there is a GoFundMe, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, you can just go to GoFundMe.com forward slash and get ready for this. Get your pens ready. Forward slash F. W4VZ hyphen help hyphen Danny. Awesome. Um, and uh, he's had some donors, but I want to I want to bump it up. Let's 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 ex- let's blow apart the five thousand dollar goal that he has. Yeah. Uh, the, we're gonna donate some of uh, some of our money. Yeah. To him uh, uh, from the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, but yeah, we we just uh, I want you know one of our own. Yeah, hurting. yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I want to thank Danny and uh, and also Amy and Sarah for their work as moderators on the members only lounge. 
And thanks to Mackenzie for all of her help on sort of the public face of Facebook for us uh, with her daily posts. Yeah, she's amazing. She's amazing. Yeah, she's grown that into something quite impressive. It's it's outstanding. Thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club and to Gordon Johnson for the use of their fine music. And thank you, dear listener, for listening. We sure do appreciate it when you do. Bye! Bye!